I want to talk about ableism in the context of language because yeah. language is power. And I, I often talk about the importance, for example, of scripting, scripting the being the act of planning out in advance of a situation happening, what we yeah. will say so that when we're in the moment, we're using more empathetic, inclusive, yeah. empowering, uh, healthy leadership language. And yeah. I think this really applies in the context of disability inclusion. And so can you take us through as an expert, what is some language that we should not be using because mm -hmm. it's ableist mm -hmm. and offensive and rooted in, in, in historical inequities? Mm -hmm. And then on the flip side, what is language we should be using? Yeah, and, and this is something that I find in a lot of my training, that people don't get hung up on what is politically correct. Um, instead of listening to people with disabilities, say that how they choose to identify and what words are comfortable for them. And so the one big thing I have encountered is a lot of people get hung up on avoiding the word disabled or disability as if that is, is harmful or offensive to people like us who live with disabilities. It is not. I'm telling you right now, it's not offensive. It is a statement of fact. You have a disability, you live with a disability, and that's perfectly fine. Because the minute you start using euphemisms like, oh, this person is challenged and they have different abilities or they're differently abled, what you're doing is you're denying the reality of what our lives look like, and you're attempting to avoid talking about disability. So I encourage you to not erase our identity by using sugar-coated language. We know we live with a disability. We know we're disabled. It is not offensive in the least to us. And Another thing that I try to avoid, and this is an example of how I keep learning. I was born with a disability. I've been doing this work for over 30 years, but language is constantly evolving as well, as you know. Um, so I, the popular terms were hidden disabilities or invisible disabilities. I've since changed that and reframed it as non-apparent, because non-apparent is a statement of fact. It's something that you can't see. But when you say hidden, hidden is a negative word in that you're thinking, well, what else are you hiding if you say, oh, I have a hidden disability? And when you say invisible, it sounds like me and my imaginary friend. And so it's better just to say non-apparent. It's more respectful. I believe in my view. And then, of course, we want to avoid using words like phrases like wheelchair bound or confined to a wheelchair because a mobility device for those who use them actually offer tremendous freedom and independence to the user. And, uh, and of course, the media also is rife with words that should be uh, stricken from vocabulary such as suffered from, uh, handicapped and afflicted by, stricken with, a victim of, all of those phrases. And, and I'm also aware of using the descriptors that are in our everyday language, like crazy and, uh, you know, don't be such an idiot. Oh, he's such a moron and don't be a spaz. And all of those words are rooted in an oppressive history. So instead of saying that was crazy, I'll say that was wild, or my day has just gone bananas, or it's gone sideways. And there, if we stop and think for a moment about the words that we're using, we can come up with substitutes that are much more respectful. So around the words that you do say is, Honestly, it's just about listening to the person with a disability, listen to how they choose to describe their disability, how they uh, talk about 
others with disabilities uh, who are their friends and family. And then if you don't know, simply ask. Ask the question, you know, how do you refer to your disability? I would like to refer to your disability in a way that's respectful. Could you help me with that? That's all that's really needed. 